So here's the thing. The Peugeot I, or the Mitsubishi IMEV, or the Citroen C0, same thing. It's a small car. It's only just over 1,100 kilos. Now, if you remember the early rally cars, the thing was to find a small, lightweight car and then lighten it and turn it into a brilliant rally car. Now, what I'm thinking is, this is already the lightest of the EVs. Well, almost. It's readily available. It's a lovely little shell. It's fairly strong. Could this be a rally car? Well, to find out, we're going to have to take it apart. Yeah, that happened. So what we've found so far is that actually it's a lightweight, fairly strong shell, which is good. What we now need to find out is how much we can tune the engine up by. And that's on the bench. So I've taken the gearbox off the motor. Now that particular motor was used by Mitsubishi. They actually did a, a Pikes Peak version of the IMEV, um, which had three of those in it. And they managed to tune them up to about 200 horsepower each. Um, they're 75 horsepower as standard. And the reason, that the way they did that was by extending the rev range um, and by increasing the voltage to it and doing field weakening and various other really clever things to it. So that poses some interesting problems. Um, if we increase the rev range, then we need a different gear set. Now that's the gearbox, which I'm just about to take apart. I've just taken all of this ring of bolts out of it and we'll find out what's inside. If we can actually find some gears that will work for us, we could actually gear this the way we want for a rally car, which is really exciting. Obviously, we also need to sort out the suspension side of things. So let's have a bit of a look at that. We've got the front suspension over there, and I've got the rear suspension over there. So let's have a bit of a closer look. Now, the front suspension subframe itself looks reasonably well designed. There's not a huge amount of weight to be taken out without... Uh, risking losing the strength. It's with reasonably good low wishbones. We've got an electric power steering rack and that big lump in the middle there, that is the air conditioning compressor which is driven by high voltage stuff. Now you might think, well you don't need air conditioning in a rally car, but it's actually used in part of the strategy of keeping the batteries cool when you're fast charging it. So you're right, we don't need it in a rally car, but we might need something to keep the battery cool when we're actually charging it fast. So that's something to consider. Other than that, I think this looks fairly tunable. The only issue is that the wheels get really close to this point here. Um, so we haven't got a lot of room to play with wheel widths and offsets. But other than that, I think we can do quite a lot with that. Let's have a look at the rear suspension. Rear suspension, it's a rear-engined, rear-wheel drive vehicle. And the rear suspension is a De Dion axle. That's uh, this bit here, that's the De Dion axle. So it's like a beam axle, but the half shafts go up to the diff, so it doesn't have the weight of a, of a beam axle. And it's got trailing arms here, which look a decent length. Drum brakes on the rear, interestingly enough. Still, you don't need rear brakes that much anyway. Um, how can we tune that? Well, we've got springs and dampers. We can do a lot with those. Um, we might be able to pull a little bit of weight out of it here and there. On top of it, we've got the inverter that drives the motor and the charge controller with the dc dc converter in it all that sort of stuff and underneath is where the motor and gearbox sit there's the gearbox there's the motor so all in all it's a fairly tidy and efficient package i think other than bracing it and make sure it can cope with the knocks and shocks there's not a lot to be done with it so let's have a look at the shell then what can we do with that now, obviously, this is a 10-year-old vehicle, so there's a few little bits of surface corrosion, nothing too severe. But in terms of how much weight we can pull out of it, not a lot. It's very well designed in the first place. There's a few sort of heavy iron brackets like that that maybe we can do something with. But other than that, it's just tweaks and slight adjustments. Strength-wise, it looks really good. There's lots of cross beams in it, lots of triangulation. It's a really strong little shell. Great starting point, I think. Let's see what else we can pull weight out of. Bumpers, trim, lots of plastic, lots of things we could throw away, but they don't really weigh that much. What about the doors? Let's have a look at the doors. The doors, very thin panels, very lightweight, very well engineered. A little bit we can do with that. 
but not a huge amount. Let's go and have a look at the dashboard. So this is the inside of the dashboard. We've got airbags. I think it's probably wise to take those out if we're taking it rallying. That large tube across there is the main support structure. You think, well, that's going to be big and heavy, but actually it's a fairly thin bore tube, a thin wall. So there's not a huge amount of weight to be taken out of that. We can trim a few little bits and pieces off it. That bit there, this assembly, is what holds the steering column up. So that's quite important. A few other bits and pieces, like things that hold the stereo and all that sort of stuff, they can go. Yeah, it's going to be a really tricky challenge, this. It's actually fairly lightweight to start with. Of course, the big issue with any electric car is the weight of the batteries. Now, on this one, it's about a quarter of a tonne. So there's a fair amount of weight in there. How much of that is the box? How much of it is the actual cells? Is the way of using more modern cells to improve on that? Well, let's have a look at the battery box. That's the battery box. It's a fairly large chunk. This bit here, that goes under the front seat. So the front seats sit on top of that. Then this is where the back seats go and the back seat passengers feet go in this footwell area here. So you can see it goes from the back of the back seats, which is where the engine and gearbox bit starts, all the way across the seats up to the front seats. And this is where your front uh, feet go, just in front of it. So it takes up pretty much all the space that you could possibly imagine. Weight-wise, it's got these uh, steel uh, safety impact strengthening beams. Now, there's absolutely no way I'm taking the, the safety stuff off it. They're really important. Could we use another material like aluminium? Well, possibly. Steel's really, really good for impact protection because it'll take more than one knock. So if you bounce off something and then hit several other things before you come to a halt, steel actually works out really well. There's a few brackets and other bits which look a bit heavy for the amount of work they do. Might be able to do a few little adjustments there. This real rear crash shield here is so that if the car gets rear-ended, uh, the powertrain can't go into the battery box particularly easily. So heavy bits like that, we can take a view of what risk we're looking at. Um, my view is we might be able to cut a couple of holes in it, um, and dimple them in so they've got the same strength, but we're not gonna be able to take a lot of weight out of that. It's a really well-designed piece of kit. So to turn this into a rally car, we got a work cut out. I think it could be a really amazing little machine. Imagine this at about the 1100 kilo mark, but with 200 horsepower. You know, we're looking at the old Escort Cosworth type of uh, power and weight so it could be a competitive little machine rear-wheel drive as well should be very very entertaining what are we going to do time will tell it's just going to be a very experimental project so we'll try some ideas out see how we get on